He is one of the all-time greats in the history of the sport, uh, held the heavyweight and light heavyweight world championships simultaneously, and he was uh, at the mic for UFC 248. He's Daniel Cormier back on the show. How are you, DC? I'm doing pretty good, Rich. How about yourself? I'm doing fine. What'd you think of that weekend, sir? What'd you think? Uh, You know, we had some good. We had some weird. uh, It was just a normal night in the UFC. You know, we had... We had some good fights. Actually, we had some great fights, and then we had that weird main event. You know, so uh, it was uh, it was like a normal day in the life of a UFC uh, uh, commentator. Yeah, you know, uh, I was going to ask you where Adesanya versus Romero fell on that on that scale of adjectives, and you place it in the weird. Why, why do you place it in the weird, sir? Man, did you see? I mean, if you watched the fight, you saw the very first minute and a half. You all just kind of stood there with his hands up, and he's so frightening that he almost froze Izzy without even doing or throwing anything. And then, honestly, it just kind of stayed that way. Uh, it, it, was, it was one of those fights where you kind of were anticipating the, uh, the, the explosion, the fireworks, and it just never came. You know, you got 25 minutes of, of, of essentially cat and mouse, you know, and, and uh, it was just weird, man. It was a weird fight. It, was, yeah, it reminds me of a fight way back in the day Anderson Silva fought uh, in, in Saudi Arabia. And it was one of those nights that just did not uh, turn out to be what everyone expected. So uh, there are some who might be holding uh, Adesanya to account for that fight being weird. Where do you stand on that subject? I don't. I don't. You know, Rich, when you fight Yoel Romero, a a guy that has knocked out so many people, a guy that has really fought in that same exact way, but finds ways to end fights with with one action. You cannot think that Izzy would just go in there and be reckless. You know, I've never seen anyone do it. And uh, he he did what he had to do. I mean, this guy's the champion. He's a guy that if you're willing to engage, you know, you'll uh, he'll give you your type of fight. But Yoel Romero is not a guy that you want to be out there being reckless with. He's just too dangerous. The 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 risk is not worth. Uh, uh, the danger that it takes to go out there and just be reckless. We met Adesanya uh, uh, last year and uh, twice. He came by in our studio uh, and he lit it up. Like we could have turned the lights off and his his energy and his uh, his personality could have powered the entire studio. I I, I love meeting him. I, I love seeing what he what he what he does. Uh, he's a showman. He's an entertainer. But how far do you think he can go in his career, Daniel? You know. Rich, I think that he can be as big a star as you had in the UFC. You know, some guys just have it. You know, it like you said, it, it just radiates off of them. You it, 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 you just see it. From the moment he walked into the octagon, he essentially marked his territory. And you saw a young kid who had never done anything uh, become a champion in like a year. And uh, that doesn't happen very often in the, in the UFC. And I think that's just one of those nights. I mean, you know, Anderson Silva, it did not really affect his legacy having that night in Saudi Arabia. And I think that's going to be the case for Izzy. I think he's just going to move forward. And and uh, his next fight is guaranteed to deliver because the guy he's fighting, Paulo Costa, has never been in a fight like uh, you saw Izzy have last so week. So how do you how do you how do you handicap that one right now? First blush. Oh, that was that's a close fight, man. I think Paulo Costa, he's a guy that says. To get the risk in fighting Joe Romero, and he just went right at him. It was the same night that I fought over in Anaheim, and it was a explosive fight. But it's hard to pick against the champ right now. But I do believe that this is the most real challenge that he's had since becoming the champion or winning uh, the interim championship. I know uh, his fight with Kelvin Gaston was super close, but I mean this guy's a beast, man, out of Brazil, and. It's going to be a fun one. Well, and in terms of his plans, he couldn't have he couldn't have been uh, Adesanya could not have been more um, graphic in his description of what he intends to do to John Jones, and not only do to John Jones, <laughs> he knows exactly where he wants it to happen. He wants it to happen in the new Raiders Stadium, and he wants it to happen next summer. And he's envisioning this. I mean, he he could not have been more point blank about it. Um, what do you think of that scenario, DC? Yeah, I mean. You know, big goals, right? You know, the last guy we saw to to pretty much try to call his shot or call his shot was Conor McGregor. And look at what that – what happened to Conor. But, <laughs> I mean, I just think that Izzy needs to really stay focused on what he has to do. You know, I, I get it. You know, you start looking at the big fish. You start looking at the big picture. 
when you become a champion and defend the championship. But I think the challenge that, that, that's in front of him right now, it's so dangerous, it's so big that he has to focus or he's going to find himself in, in, uh, in, in over his head with Paulo Costa. This guy is, this guy is so freakishly scary. I mean, if, if you could see a picture of him, Rich, you'd be like, yeah, I would never look past this guy. Paulo Costa's a beast. And I think Izzy needs to focus on that. And when the time comes and him and Jones fight, it's going to be fun. But you can but right now he's got business. You can understand the animus he has towards uh, Jones, Daniel. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's easy to dislike John Jones. I mean, it's not, <laughs> it's not, uh, it's not hard. And Jones has really made uh, Izzy a target. And I think that Edison is one of those new age guys, Rich, that – you know, he, he, he does not like challenges, and, and he does not pull any punches when it comes to uh, uh, fight building. Daniel Cormier here on the Rich Eisen Show. You just alluded to it in terms of Connor calling his shot and got a little bit too much more than he wanted. Uh, Khabib back in the octagon. It's going to happen in uh, about five weeks' time against Tony Ferguson. What do you think of that fight, how that is going to play That's out? That's a great fight. That is a great fight. I mean, that is probably the biggest fight that we can make in the UFC right now. You got... Uh, Habib Nurmagomedov, who's a guy, and 28 no, I mean, no mistakes. And Tony Ferguson has not lost in eight years. So um, I think this is the t- – Connor's talented. Connor is the biggest star in the UFC. But I think when you look at the two most skillful guys at 155 pounds, it doesn't get much better than Habib and Tony. And I think you get the two great – two of the greatest lightweights of all time uh, on in, in April in Brooklyn. And, and, and this is a fun fight. I mean – I'm Khabib's uh, teammate, and I know for the longest time in-house we have felt that this is the most dangerous fight for him. And uh, I'm excited for him to finally get it done. So h- how would you have handled it um, um, if your belt got kicked in a press conference as Khabib <laughs> did to Ferguson last Friday? How would you have handled that if your belt got kicked in a, in a, in a pre-fight uh, hype fight right there? I'd be pissed off, you know, but, you know, Tony's a guy that, that, that just kind of, he looked like it didn't bother him any. I think Tony went to that press conference with the idea that he was going to agitate Habib. And I feel when Habib kicked the belt, he almost gave Tony exactly what he wanted, right? He let Tony know that he was kind of upsetting him. And that, uh, I feel like, you know, whether Habib would have pushed him or, or, you know, gotten, gotten angry or, or, in this case, kicked the belt. That's the exact reaction that Tony was looking for. So I feel like he didn't get upset. I feel like he was very happy. He feels like he got a win there. A couple more minutes left with Daniel Cormier here in the Rich Eisen Show. I think you saw the video of you and Joe Rogan going viral, right? Did you see <laughs> the reaction? Did you know you were on camera when you were, you were reacting to the, the close knockout? You know, Rich, we, we, they, they usually have a commentator camp, so you know it. Yeah. But Joe said the greatest thing the other day, and he goes, we're just professional fans, right? We're fans of the sport that just are lucky enough to be able to call the fights. And it was, it was, it, it was just, it was crazy because Benel Daryush had Jakar close his back the whole first round, almost submitted him. Then Jakar hurts him very bad. He's looking to finish. And then Benil hits him on the side of the head. Right and gets them all wobbly, chicken leg, starts running back. They start exchanging, and then boom. And then the visual, Rich, you saw it. His mouthpiece is halfway out of his mouth. Eyes are rolling back in his head. It was, I mean, one of the best ones that I've ever seen sitting next to the side of the octagon. But it was all paled in comparison to the uh, fight between Zhang and Young Jacek, right? I mean, that was oh, yeah, yeah. the ladies oh. had, had, had the evening. Yeah, Yohan and Young Jacek and, and Wei Li Zhang put on the best fight that I've seen in a long time, Rich. It's going to go down yes. as one of the greatest title fights in UFC history. 400 significant strikes were landed between these two women. It was insane. And then to see Joanna's head at the end of it, it was worse than Hasim Rahman. I think before last Saturday, nobody had a bigger hematoma than Hasim Rahman had in his uh, title fight a while back. Right. But this, this thing was crazy. Do we know how she is today? You know? He's doing better. Yeah, you know, here, here's the thing about that, right? Like, in the moment, it hurts very bad. Right. But all that swelling goes down pretty quick. You know, they probably took it to the hospital. It was constant ice, constant pressure. And I'm sure it probably went down pretty fast. But in the fight, every time she got hit, I'm sure her, her brain was feeling it. Her head was feeling it. No matter where she took contact, she was feeling it on that, that, that spot. 
Okay. And how are you feeling? You good? I'm, I'm good, man. Yeah, I'm good, Rich. I'm, I'm just waiting for that, that fight against Pipe, you know, waiting to uh, try to correct the wrong of last summer. I, I tell my, uh, I told the UFC and, and, uh, and my management team, I said, don't ever offer me a fight again in Anaheim, California. <laughs> I love SoCal. I love being over there, but there has not been a guy in UFC history to lose more championship belts in the Honda Center. Uh, I say, so do not offer me a fight in Anaheim. I'll turn it down. Okay. Uh, so what is the latest on that, though? What do you got You know, for me? we're just waiting on Miocic. You know, he, he had some injuries after the last fight. We beat each other up pretty good over there. Right. And uh, we're trying to see uh, when he's ready to go. But we're looking at the summer. And uh, it's starting to sound more and more like we'll have something pretty secure in the next week. Are you working with George Foreman right now, Daniel? I am. What yeah, is, started what is, working with Big George, man. Come on you know, now. What's that like? I promise you, Rich. It's crazy. And, and, and you know, George was 47 when he won the heavyweight title. I'm going to be 41 years old. I'm like, if anybody understands wow. how to train as an older athlete, it's George Foreman. And, and it was good. And, look, I love being around George. And we talk boxing. We talk MMA. And initially, I was starstruck. And then realized that George is out of his mind. George is telling me all kinds of stuff about boxing versus MMA. I was like, come right. on, George. You can't believe this. Right. So uh, d- is, all- is the Daniel Cormier grill not too far behind as well? Are you going to oh, get that going? Get that going. Hey, Rich. If I could give, if my grill could sell half of what the former grill sold, I'd be happy. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in, Daniel. We'll get you back on soon. Obviously, 249 is right around the corner. And it was uh, fun hearing you at the mic as always. Thank you so much, Rich. I appreciate you guys having me. Don't be a stranger. That's Daniel Cormier at DC underscore MMA on both Twitter and Instagram. One of the most popular fighters of all time right here on the Rich Eisen Show.